Hi everybody, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, just sitting here, uh, you know, meditating a little bit before, you know, we start the show and before I know I'm going to have to come out and, and speak about, about what we all know is happening now, about the incredible change that's in the air, that's in the, the vibration of this planet, that, that is in, really in all our hearts, to come, to come home again, to come back into an experience of our, of our connectedness, of our unconditional love, of our inclusiveness, of our infinite qualities. To come home into love again. And, and we can feel the, 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 the vibration of the planet just shaking and rattling and rolling in a way. And, and just moving us consciously, unconsciously, uh, graciously or ungraciously, I guess depending on where we're coming from, into that experience more and more and over and over and more and more and, and, and again and again. And how do we deal with that? How do we really change the way we as humans individually and collectively experience ourselves, experience each other, experience this planet, experience our interactions, our interrelationships, our ways of being from literally from birth to death. How do we, and, and every breath in between, how do we build those new paradigms that, that are, going to, are going to allow us as a species to joyously and lovingly as much as possible, to graciously, to just with ease, come into that recognition and that knowing and that experience in a much fuller, much more realized, much more powerful way. And we know that the, the ways of, of, of the old are not working. The ways we interact with each other over so many things are based on an experience of separation, based on, on a, an illusion. I will, let me rephrase that, an illusion of separation, an illusion of fear, an illusion of our limited quality, an illusion of the lack of abundance on this planet. And how do we come into the experience of abundance, of fullness, of the infinite, of inclusion, of unconditional love, of what we call the oneness. And it's going to take all of us together, coming together, together we can, coming together in, in intention, in action, in, in every which way to bring, a, to bring in this new world, to bring in this new way an old way, a new way, whatever way you would look at it, but to bring us home into love. And that is our blessing and our gift and our responsibility and our destiny and our way and our path and our and why we're here as, as individuals and collectively as a species. Why we're here is to bring about this new world, this new world based on love. And again, tonight's guest literally has come a long way to come to this show, has come a long way in her life. Elena Tenetti Vladimirova is, was born in Russia. She is one of the original leaders of the conscious birth uh, movement in Russia. She travels the world country after country, averages 12 countries a year, teaching conscious birth, birth into being, to, to take us to the to the root of this one individual life, to how we can be conscious about that from, from the, the onset of pregnancy to the, to the birth, to the, to the child rearing, and every step in between, every step in between birth and death. And she's the founder of world-renowned workshops and teachings about the birth into being, about conscious birth. And she shares a unique and innovative and highly effective approach to a, a recoding, a, a, a limbic imprint, imprint recoding 
of, of this birth process, of this coming into this one human body and how we can experience it consciously and lovingly and beautifully and how the parents can be part of that and how the community can be part of that. And she's produced this extraordinary, she was a director and producer of an extraordinary video that we're going to see two parts of today, uh, Birth As We Know It, which, which shows some of the experiences people have had with this conscious birth, this birth into being, this birth into consciousness, this birth into love. So from the outset, Elena has gone through an extraordinary life story and a life history to bring these gifts to the world, to bring this understanding to the world. And, you know, we're honored that she is here in, in Santa Barbara with us to, to share those gifts and to share those understandings, to see that video. It's, it's really a blessing to, to be able to be part of that. And as most of you know, uh, we're also involved in an extraordinary international healing art project. It came as a vision, it came as a dream as a healing, as an acupuncture for the planet, that we would reach out to the world and use this bridging platform, this bridging uh, medium, this bridging distribution system that goes all over the world through cable stations and through Sky Channel in Europe and all over England and Europe and Scotland, through the YouTube and Vimeo internet sites, that show after show is made available. And on those shows, we show this extraordinary art that's coming from all over the, the planet. And what we said is, we will do that, and we will reach out to the world, and anybody who wants to produce a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth, get it to us here, and we'll put it on the shows. We'll have you know art project shows, which we have one actually coming up pretty soon, where we're only going to show art. And we'll have an extraordinary uh, uh, healing art website, heaventoearthart.com, and we've gotten over 350 pieces from all over the world, literally from all over the world, any size, any format. We've gotten acrylics and oils and glass and collages and jewelry and uh, large and small and, and people of all ages, all skill levels. Anybody who wants to be part of it is welcome. It's inclusive, it's ongoing, it's, and it's infinite. Because that's the energy that this show wants to put out, what the art project, the healing art project's about, to make everybody feel the vibration of being infinite and being included. Because everyone is included in the love, and everybody is included in this great mystery and great experience of being in a human body and having that energy within them. So, again, it's an extraordinary opportunity for everyone to be part of the show. And anybody who wants to do a, a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth, don't be discouraged if you're not a professional artist. Don't be discouraged if you've never done anything before. Grab a box of Sharpie markers and a sketch pad. Get it to us. Put that love of yours. Put that intention of yours to be part of this grand healing. Put it on a paper. Put it on an easel, put it on a, a, a any, anything. Do it out of glass, do it anything. Get it to us here. The more people involved in the art project, the better the healing, the better the acupuncture. And so the piece that, the first piece we're going to show tonight is by uh, actually an extraordinary professional artist, Olivia Lashley. Her, her, uh, her artist's name is Livers, Livers. L-I-V-Z, I don't know how that came out. And the picture you're seeing is Aurorian Helix. It's an acrylic paint, purples, blues, and metallic champagne gold. It's in a gallery black with a, a gold shadow box frame. Uh, Olivia is from London, uh, England, London, United Kingdom. Her website is www.artsatiety.com. And here's what she says about her piece. Uh, Livizel talks about Aurorian Helix. The spiritual connection is in Aurorian Helix. The inspiration is the ebb and flow of life energy. It depicts the energetic frequency that circumnavigates everything that is. 
So that's uh, Olivia's piece, and we're going to see another piece by Laureen Hunter, a beautiful piece, later on. And so just settle in. Let me uh, start you with a, a nice meditation, and then we'll have the first part of uh, Elena's video, and then Elena's going to be with us, and really it's an opportunity to be in love for the next hour. That's what this show's about, and that's what we're, we're re really here on this planet to do. So join me in a short meditation. Okay, so that, beautiful. Okay, so we're going to see the first part of Elena's beautiful, award-winning video, Birth as We Know It. It's translated into 12 languages and is helping conscious birth in, in 57 countries. Enjoy. A pregnant woman is participating in an event of miraculous significance. She is bringing into existence a new life that did not exist before. The quality of this life will be defined by the quality of birth. The genius of her body is designed to give birth with ease and grace. In our soft, warm hands, we are holding the keys to our future. Natural birth is a powerful initiation, a rite of passage for all involved. Within the sacred act of birth lies a pathway to the pure potentiality of life. This is birth as nature knows it. This is birth as we know it. Gestation is one of the most mysterious processes in our three-dimensional reality. We know a lot about the stages of gestation, but what exactly makes gestation possible remains a mystery. What is that creative power that organizes a number of dividing cells into a beautifully formed human body? What is that power that allows cells to divide in the first place? What is the body? It looks like a solid object, but under a powerful microscope, it becomes a liquid, pulsating emptiness. fluid element of warm water is a supportive birthing field which allows the mother to attune to the primal rhythm of life as she is engaged in the timeless art of childbirth.
Hi everybody, welcome back. So that was a beautiful video. You'll see more of it later on. That was the video by Elena, Birth as We Know It. Uh, it's available, you know, go to Elena's website if you want to see the whole thing. And the beautiful piece of art you see in between Elena and I is again by Olivia Lashley, Aurorian Helix. Uh, Olivia is from uh, the United Kingdom and she does her art under the artist name L-I-V-Z. So, yeah, go to the Bridging website, Heaven to Earth Art, and look at her art and go to her, you know, links for, to her website and you'll see all this incredible art. And again, everybody who wants to be part of it, everyone is welcome, and it's better for the healing, better for the acupuncture. So welcome, Elena. It's my <laughs> pleasure to be here. Yeah. And so they've seen part of the video so they know the, the power of of conscious birthing and how in your as i said you've had an extraordinary history which you know coming out of russia and all that how did you get into that that was your spoke that that was your way of raising consciousness of, of bringing bringing us home into that love when did that become real for you became real for me in 1982 when I met this person, Igor Cherkovsky, who um, basically pioneered this concept in Moscow, uh, in Russia at that time. And in the first meeting, he basically outlined for me the correlation between the way we're coming into this world and the quality of our life. That was the basic piece that really got my attention. At that time, birth was absolutely the last thing on my mind. I was not even planning to have my own children uh, due to my own birth trauma. I was absolutely terrified at the thought of uh, an insanity of why would somebody want to do something like that. It's just multiplying misery was not a virtue in my book. And um, when he explained to me that if we uh, if we neutralize the, neutralize the suffering in the moment of arrival, then the baby that enters into this three-dimensional reality is a completely different quality of a human being that is not programmed on pain and suffering as all of us were. You know, if you're born in Russia, it means that you were severely traumatized at birth. And basically, since then, since I came to America and found all the research that was written in the last 20, 15 years in the field of prenatal psychology, um, there is a huge body of research accumulated um, uh, that undoubtedly speaks to that exact theme, that the way we were born defines the quality of our perception of the world, of our relationship with ourselves, with each other. And um, as a species, as human beings on planet Earth, we can even see the correlation if we just look back at the history. For example, when was the drug introduced into the delivery room? In the 40s. So we have in the 60s all this generation that was set up for um, experiencing needing the drug as a way of feeling good about themselves. It's basically, that's how that limbic imprint works. Limbic imprint is um, an automatic function of our nervous system to absorb everything that we experience from the moment of conception throughout pregnancy. The birth itself is a very uh, significant part in this imprint and then the first few years of life what happens to us when we're really small registers in our limbic system of the brain as the norm so then as we grow up and mature and, and um, sort of face the world we have tendency of recreating that kind of experiences um, that mechanism is nature's merciful way of um, assuring um, sustenance of the species. That's how the mother lion teaches a baby lion how to be a lion. You know, she can't send her baby to school or tell her what to eat, what not to eat, right? So this limbic imprint is there for the young one of the species to just 
be in the field of the mother and, and absorb the habits, the behaviors, the, uh, you know, when to sleep, when to hunt, all this kind of stuff. So if you um, place a cub of one species to the mother of the other species, um, the cub would learn the behavior of the adopted parents. And basically this mechanism was widely used by humans for thousands of years because it's not in the nature, for example, a horse to be a war horse. So if you take a wild horse and put her in the front line where people are fighting and screaming and machetes and swords are going, the wild horse would just take off, you know, would not do that. But if you bring um, the horse from babyhood into experiencing that kind of environment as normal, then it's not objecting. Or the same thing with elephants and camels. Basically, if you take the young of the species and establish a certain environment, they don't object. So, um, it's only a one short step to make the next, um, next conclusion. Why do we need suffering at birth? You see, all the other species um, don't know about suffering at birth. Our bodies, our physiology is such that we can do uh, birthing the same way any cat knows how to do without taking classes, without reading books about it. When a mama cat is ready to let the babies out, she finds a place, gets really quiet and focused and opens. And the female body is quite, quite powerful and magical that way. A woman becomes not a solid frame. She becomes this um, portal that is ever able to expand and um, surrender to this powerful vortex of the birthing field that is actually the spiraling um, energy that comes and takes over the whole process and allows a woman to, to have this incredible experience when the birth becomes not the suffering but instead a rite of passage, um, initiation into her true power of the creatrix of new life. The woman's body is uh, perfectly equipped neurobiologically, hormonally, anatomically for creating life, for creating a new, new universe, if you wish. And, um, and that would be such a strange, oops, I forgot that little part on the part of the creator about how to get that new universe out of there. There was no mistake. The only mistake there is right now is us believing that there was a mistake. And um, basically this whole idea of suffering at birth, it's a learned, conditioned um, myth that was created not that long time ago in the history of um, evolution of planet, um, maybe a couple thousand years ago. And before that, uh, now they're telling us that there was high mortality and all of that stuff. But you see, high mortality was not due to actual birthing process. It was due to uh, countless other factors. Malnutrition, wars, plagues, um, domestic violence that was quite, you know, a norm in olden days that um, wife beating was kind of a socially acceptable norm. Plus, um, traditionally, uh, young girls were given as wives to uh, a marriage uh, kind of institution way before they even reached childbearing age. So, um, there was so many factors that were playing into this whole um, situation that uh, was putting us as a species into this uh, kind of really strange, dissociated, disconnected way. With uh, everything uh, right, we do. Right, right. Yeah. And it starts with birth because if you introduce that kind of level of dissociation right into the limbic imprint, there we have the whole 
uh, population that really doesn't understand yeah. which way is up and down, what, what's right, what's wrong, because the sense of right and wrong is innate to our spiritual, soulful journey, but not if we are yanked out of our connection with the source from which we arrived in the first place. And that is happening again due to very specific neurobiological function of our brain to uh, check out when the going gets really tough. Um, you probably saw um, footage of some hunt in Savannah in, or what it, wherever when the predator is going after the prey. And in that case, when the, uh, the hunt was successful and the fangs close on the prey's neck, what happens next? You see that the prey goes like, you know, and you can see that it's still alive. It's blinking their eyes and there is still some breathing going on, but she's not there. There goes that mechanism to, to leave because it's not nice to be there when your body is being torn to pieces, you know, when you're lunch. It's just nature ensured that there comes in the certain level of numbness that, um, that allows the pain that doesn't hurt. So with humans, what happens is that when we get um, that sensory overload as our very first experience in life, we do the same thing. We check out. And, and, you're, and you're of the opinion that we, in a sense, never come back. That depends on what happens afterwards. That really depends on the parenting style. So if the parents really understand that the baby is a deeply feeling human being, that it's not just a small piece of, piece of flesh that is not quite person yet, which was, until quite recently, a strong belief. Even open-heart surgeries were done without anesthetics, just with paralyzing agents to keep the babies still and quiet so they can't move, because um, it was actually printed in the medical Bible that babies don't feel, because it was used to be believed that until you can talk about it and remember and articulate, verbalize, you're not a person yet. So sort of nobody is there. But the, the sensory apparatus is not cortex. It's not the cognitive function. The sensory apparatus happens in that limbic part of the brain, which is governing the sensations, the feelings, love, feelings of anger or frustration, a mother's conflict, internal conflict about if, whether she wants a child or not, whether she is in good connection with the father of the baby, whether she is um, empowered in this pregnancy or terrified of it. All of this is known very intimately by the baby. Energetically. Well, energetically, yes, but also um, un, um, chemically, because mm -hmm. the baby is basically swimming in the mother's juices, and whether she's producing oxytocin and serotonin and melatonin, all those feel-good kind of um, hormones of love and well-being, or she's producing adrenalines and, and all those stress hormones that um, keep her in this fight-and-flight kind of... Uh, mode if she has to um, protect herself during pregnancy. So all this chemistry is not filtered by placenta. It's, uh, it's going into the baby and affecting baby uh, absolutely instantly and immediately. So the baby's flesh is built either from I love you, I want you. You are the center of my universe now. I'm surrendering to um, loving you for the rest of my life, this kind of energy. Or it's like, um, you know, I don't want you. <laughs> what about my waistline? I hate your father. You know, he's a loser and, and all that kind of energy. And um, there is so much research that um, on my website, I actually have a huge reference list for um, resources. 
Um, the, by the due date, by the day of birth, the baby has already established um, character, personality trait, health basis, sexuality, um, ability for love and intimacy or inability for love and intimacy. The, that um, very primal human function, the ability to love, It's exactly that, it's the ability that we either are born with or not. So if we were not, if we were scared in utero, if we didn't really experience this world as welcoming and safe and, and um, worth being born into, you know, on that physical primal level, of course there is a dynamic going on because our spirit wants it. Right, chose you know, that's to be how we in got in there in the first right, place right. because it's you know there was right. this intention, and our soul wants it because it happened. You know, the proof is in the pudding. If we didn't right. want it, it would not have happened. Right. But there is also that physical level, that pure three dimensional physiology that could be absolutely terrified of the notion of embodying in this world. Wow. You know, let's see the second half of that in the video. We'll come back and maybe how to unwind that, you know, because probably okay. a lot of us have experienced birth and living in a human body with that kind About of... About 98% of people were born that's to... High enough, that's high enough to use as an example, would you say? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll see this a second part of the uh, birth as we know it is Elena's award-winning video. It's translated into 12 languages uh, and it's traveled all over the world really helping people on every level. So enjoy. Conscious birth is about meaningful, purposeful procreation, about creating our own reality. What really makes it a conscious birth is the preparation during pregnancy. I cannot overemphasize the importance of it. It includes a fair amount of soul searching and deep emotional healing because pregnancy activates a woman's own birth trauma. Left unattended, these issues can and will assume some form of complication during delivery. So, first things first, a woman needs to heal her own birth trauma in order to avoid recreating it at the time of delivery. Water birth isn't just about water. It allows the mother to relax and regain her composure if she is getting tired in labor. But overall, by itself, water cannot make a big difference if a woman still has a high level of anxiety and denial in her life. Just placing a laboring woman in the water doesn't make it a conscious birth. Water birth means that she herself becomes very watery, resilient, fluent in her body language, that she melted down all the frozen structures in her emotional landscape and let her rivers flow effortlessly. А 
Delivering a baby is not something I can get used to. It brings so much happiness and joy into my heart. My favorite moment in each birth is the time when a woman suddenly realizes that the only person in charge is her. Everything that existed in her mind until that moment fades away. If even an hour ago she was hesitating, not quite believing that she is really going to go through with it, suddenly, in the course of a few minutes, the whole dynamic shifts. Her energy completely changes. She becomes stunningly beautiful and strong. Her innate wisdom and body intelligence gets activated. Her genetic cellular memory kicks in. The strength she never knew she had. It's one of the most significant moments of exceptional beauty in a woman's life. That's when she becomes a woman in the full meaning of the word. By the time of delivery, a woman needs to completely let go of anything and everything that has been holding her back. She just needs to show up for herself and for her baby. Alona's midwife, Tatiana Sargunas, is gently guiding her throughout the delivery using the most effective technique of toning. of the baby was not able to be present, so Alona's mother wholeheartedly supported her. In the process of healing her own birth trauma activated by the approaching delivery, it is only natural for a pregnant woman to turn to her own mother for emotional comfort. Hi everybody, welcome back. So that was another part of that beautiful video of Elena's birth as we know it. So again, uh, go to Elena's website, go to the Bridging website, there are links to it. And you can, you know, there are all different versions of it in all different languages. So if you want to see more of it, it, it is available. And the beautiful piece of art you see in between Elena and I is from uh, Canada, Mississauga, Canada, for Laureen Hunter, Life Bridge it's called and it's an acrylic on canvas, and this is what Laureen uh, says about Life Bridge. The painting sees the bridge from heaven to earth to be the human spirit <clears throat> as it reaches for this connection. The pregnancy depicts the ongoing chain of human evolution man maintaining the bridge as long as life exists. Laureen Hunter, Life Bridge. It's an acrylic on canvas, and Everyone is welcome to join us, so please do. Okay. So, Elena, we've determined that 98% of us have had births that set us in a, a not as healthy momentum as could be done. <laughs> Fix it. Help us here, will you? Yeah, and um, if you want a proof, look around. This is the state of the world we live in. You know, we have 250 wars going on right now on this planet Earth, and it's 250 too many. And why are they there? Well, who needs them anyway, right? But that's the thing, that all those boys that grew up and um, decided the war is the way of life, all those boys were basically neglected when they were little, when they really needed their mother to be there for them. 
it was the time when uh, mothers were told to shut the door, put them to the crib, and cry themselves to sleep in the dark. It was the time when mothers were told not to breastfeed, not to, God forbid, pick up their babies, because that might spoil them. It was um, the time when babies really were left to their own devices. And what happens to this small child when the lights go off and the mother leaves? And there is crying and crying and crying and crying. And on baby's time, there is no such thing as in the morning she will show up and give you this bottle of something that is not breast milk, but at least something that um, quiet that sense of hunger. You know, she will do this in the morning. On baby time, there is no such thing. On baby time, every instant equals eternity. So that, you know, we're not even talking about all the, the complexity of the emotions that women go through um, pregnancy, all the, the, the terror of birth and suffering of birth. We're talking about just one little thing of leaving the child alone to sleep. And um, basically that sets up that mentality that there is absolutely nobody out there for me that knows my needs, that knows how to take care of my needs, that gives a damn about my needs, you know? It's uh, generation after generation of uh, children being not respected, being ignored. And it did not start with this you know, with this generation. It started yeah, thousands of years yeah. ago, yeah. We've we as a species, <laughs> right. yes, there was this notion that war is the natural state of um, our being. But guess what? We're seeing now with those babies that were born without trauma, we're seeing that they're not like that. They have absolutely no aggression, no uh, negative lenses to see the world from. They're very intelligent, very present. They don't have to expect that, you know, the, the betrayal of the world, the betrayal of each other. They just see things for what they are. They perceive themselves for who they are. And the main thing is that they remember who they are and what brought them to this planet in the first place. Something that is really hard to remember if we were hammered, you know, traumatized and, and scared for our very existence. So there is a question to ponder. Imagine if George W. Bush would be breastfed and cared for. There would be no war in Iraq. <laughs> and, well, he might not have been president because, you know, I mean, the way the system's set up. You know, right, but I'm not no, talking about just him. I'm yeah, saying right. all of the George Bushes, you know, right. that make those decisions because there would not be that fear-based scarcity mentality. How did my oil got under your sand? You know, they don't think that way. They're really, um, you know, into sharing, cooperation, into helping each other. They're very compassionate and... And um, just w when you see the other person for who they truly are, you don't want to just hurt them. It, it, it's not coming up. And also, not just these new children that are coming for the last 20 years, it's 30 years. <laughs> the, they started coming 30 years ago, but in mass, in such vast amounts, that basically we have now the critical mass of this non-traumatized children. That's my plan. You know that. You know about the hundredth monkey effect. Yeah. So the among those monkeys, they needed a hundred in order to sort of create the pre right. prevailing um, behaviors. In humans, it's a different. Uh, number, of course, because we are um, quite um, a lot of us. But um, I strongly believe that we already have the critical mass in the last 30 years of those babies born that um, 
remember who they are, that really know the preciousness of this planet and really have the ability to bring heaven to earth. They not even wired differently, you know, the way we are wired, there is this certain wiring happening in our nervous system due to this limbic imprint. Um, in children who were born 30 years ago, it's a completely different wiring. It's a much um, upgraded version of human being. In kids that are born 10 years ago, it's yet a different level of the equipment with better gadgets, you know, the, the newer models are coming in with all kinds of uh, things that we could not even um, imagine that humans would be able to have. But kids that are being born right now, they're not even wired differently, they're just wireless. They're completely different, uh, different quality of, um, of uh, us. <laughs> so, but but uh, there are a lot of there are still a lot of us over thirty, and so right. how can we get recoded or, or yeah. rehealed or? Yeah, um, that's basically my work. That's what I do, and my work started with pregnant women because when we uh, were organizing those birth camps at the Black Sea, which is really in the middle of nowhere, because we needed clean water, clean warm. Um, private area where there is no tourists so we had to really go away and when you go away there is no plan B so what followed is that we wanted to protect ourselves of course the the new babies and come up with a, some kind of common sense solution how can we avoid possible complications and all the research in this area came down to um, a few basic um, um, basic premises that uh, we started implying into our practice and it worked it's just amazing you can uh, the viewers can see my video that has 11 absolutely ecstatic births when I am showing what it's supposed to look like when you remove the reason of possible complication then complications simply don't arise then a woman does what her body is supposed to do but then we realized that uh, anybody is present at, uh, in the birthing field actually is projecting their own anxiety and generating more reasons for something to sort of be triggered or go wrong. So we realized that everybody who will be present at this birth has to go through this program of neutralizing their own birth trauma. And uh, in process of discovery with each um, with each birth, of course, we were learning because there was nowhere else to learn. <laughs> there was, you know, now people can come to my workshop or take uh, plenty of other workshops. Where were we supposed to, you know, who were we supposed to ask questions? So um, it was um, quite a process which um, I describe uh, in, in depth in my workshops and articles, how it all came about. But um, what was the final outcome was realization that it's not only for pregnant women, that it's basically anybody who wants to get a new lease on life can do that. That it's not actually very difficult. It all depends on the intention and some, you know, witty facilitation, but it's not very difficult. And the effect of us was just staggering. It was amazing. The stories that were coming up, it, it just was proof enough for us to keep going and keep researching and practicing and trying new things and trying to find more and more new ways of um, figuring what works. And uh, at some point, um, the program was all nine months when a couple had to come, both of them had to come throughout the whole pregnancy once a week for nine months. Then it was, you know, like computers are getting upgraded, they're getting smaller and smaller and can do more and more. 
So this uh, was evolving in the same manner. It was getting faster and faster and uh, was taking less and less time. And to the point that now in one weekend I can cover a lot of ground that can make a really big difference. But of course, um, you know, if instead of two days people would come for four days, then it's not only getting the new software, but installing it and learning to use it too. So. <laughs> and, and, but, but this process of the, of the uh, re-encoding mm -hmm. uh, is available for anybody. It doesn't have to be involved even around a pregnancy or a birth. Right, or... right. Anybody who is willing to experience what, what's beyond their programming. You see that limbic imprint is sort of like basic settings you know like in in a tv you have basic settings if you put your uh, brightness uh, all the way to the left on dim no matter what kind of a movie you're watching all of them would be really dim right, right? so that's how the limbic imprint if we are traumatized into numbness no matter what kind of experience we're having in life we're not going to be able to actually even feel it, never mind enjoy it or, or be present for it. So that, that kind of setting is the limiting um, belief about ourselves. And um, it's uh, very interesting that um, our sensory apparatus is actually, I believe, our primary job description on this planet. I believe that humankind is like a nervous system of this planet. Through us, she sees and tastes and listens and knows herself. We are the nerve endings that, uh, that basically we look like all separate people and we're walking our own separate ways, but we belong to this one system that this planet evolves through us. And in that sense, our ability to sense is what we're here to do, to collect the experiences, to, um, to um, bring it into our conscious awareness, what they are, what we want, what we don't want, find out, um, you know, where we belong in this world. And um, that sensory apparatus of ours is extremely sophisticated and, and complicated and we have so many senses when I tried to count I came up to um, 19 and some bright mind put in our school textbooks that we only have five senses that's a highway robbery you know we're right there screwed. we're getting screwed big time it's because <laughs> because you see the five senses that are listed as our only senses is only senses that come sort of as a given all the other senses need yeah, to be activated subtle. no they're more they're more um, um, capricious so if they don't get activated they don't get to be owned like sense of right and wrong like sense of um, balance sense of um, time, um, electroception, telepathy, empathy, uh, nociception, that's the sense of pleasure, experiencing pleasure. Um, proprioception, that's where we know the body, like the, the, the presence in the body. It actually has a fancy word proprioception. That's the one that Highway Patrol uses to see if you're drunk when they make you close your eyes and touch your nose. See so if you're, if you're there. Right. If you're <laughs> right. drunk, you can't find your nose. So that's uh, proprioception is off. But uh, You know, it's interesting, but we're really coming to the end of the show, and you've said so much. You'll have to come back, because I think there's a lot more to talk about in how we can... You think? Uh, <laughs> I do think. <laughs> and I think you're just getting warmed up. But, you <laughs> I know, didn't even get we'll started yet. <laughs> All right. Good night. God bless you. We love yeah. you. Thank you. The good news is there is my website and there is a lot of material already there. So thank you. Good night. Yeah.